What's up? This is Robbie. Um, I'm here to give you a quick summary of the book The One Thing. Um, I've just finished reading it just a couple of hours ago. Um, it's actually a book I've been reading on off, you know, kind of like, you know, these books where you start reading it and then you stop midway and then, you know, you, you see the book again like half a year later. And then you start again, then you stop again. So today I was like, look, Robbie, this is the one chance. Like, come on, dude, read that fucking book. Um, and I did, I did. I pulled through it in six hours. Um, and I have to say it was well worth it. It's, it's probably one of my top three books ever. Uh, the top two uh, being by Grant Cardone. Uh, one of them is uh, The Millionaire Playbook. Sorry, play, uh, Millionaire Booklet. Uh, the Millionaire Playbook is like a big course he does. Uh, the Millionaire Booklet and the other one being The 10x Rule, also by Grant Cardone. Um, so anyway, the, the book is actually extremely complementary to the two books I love, you know, The 10x Rule and The Millionaire Booklet. Um, because The Millionaire Booklet, it's about, uh, it's a really quick book. You can read it in like an hour. Um, by the way, sorry for the glare on the glasses. That's kind of impossible to cancel right now. Um, so The Millionaire Booklet is about um, sort of like the eight simple recyclable cycle steps that you can take uh, to become a millionaire. Um, the second book, The 10x Rule, is about setting the right targets uh, in terms of thinking and in terms of uh, your estimation of effort and goals. Now, this book, what I really like about it is that it teaches you a very simple, very accurate philosophy of thinking where you have the proper framework to treat life, to treat obstacles, to treat your goals. Um, so the book the 10x rule I'll I'm gonna kind of take it as I, I take it as my guide uh, I basically simplify it and take it as my guide to always remember to take my goals and set targets that are 10 times bigger than my goals and also to whenever I estimate the effort of something to do it you know as everybody else does and then the message is at the end you kind of multiply how much effort you think it's gonna take multiply it by 10. So this book though, I think it's more about, um, again, your philosophy uh, in general, how you, uh, okay, so you have that thinking part and the action part, but what's the philosophy behind it? Like how do you set the right goals? You know, not just the big enough goals, but how do you set goals in terms of the right goals. How do you properly manage your time? How do you focus? How do you leverage uh, your activities? How do you increase production? How do you um, get answers to various questions you have about your life and um, other aspects of it? So I've made this um, summary, like I, I love to make these summaries whenever I read a book. I'm gonna link to it below in the description uh, and you can feel free to um, to download it fully. Now I'm gonna like skim through it, take the thing, what I think are the best parts. Um, and again, if you want a f the full description, the full summary, uh, you can just download it from my website. So basically, the one thing, what the book is about, it's uh, the single thing that if you do it, it will make everything everything else easier or redundant. Uh, so, for example, for me, when I kind of grew into the book and started thinking about it, okay, what's my one thing? It's something I knew for a long time, but this kind of reinforced it for me. My one thing is money. So, I have tons of goals in my life, like you could call it sub-goals, where my goals are related to fitness. For example, I want to be much more muscular. Uh, so, there's two ways to go about it. You can, you know, train your ass off for years and hope it goes well or if you have a lot of money you can just hire a personal trainer to train you every single day which again takes all the guesswork out of it and makes it kind of an automatic success process if you pick the right coach um, other aspects for me 
are, for example, travel. I love to travel and I love meeting people who are way more successful than me, especially my idols. Obviously, this is a function of money. Uh, the more money you have, the more able you are to do that. You know, I'm not just talking about money. I'm also talking about, you know, specifically cash flow, how much money you have coming in every single month. So this kind of helps simplify my focus where before that I was putting tons of emphasis on fitness. Um, and then that helped, helped me kind of dial back the fitness part instead of doing it like two hours a day, dialing it back to 45 minutes a day just to, you know, keep fit and actually use that as further motivation uh, to get much wealthier because once I reach a certain point, I'll be able to hire a full-time personal trainer um, and so I'll reach my goals, my fitness goals much faster. So without a personal trainer, it would take me, uh, let's say, four or five years uh, and tons of effort and thinking and questioning myself and making mistakes. With a, with a, fitness in the, um, with a personal fitness instructor, uh, you could actually do the same thing in 20% of the time um, and 20% of the effort. So it actually is much smarter to, obviously you want to maintain your fitness, but it would be much smarter to first of all focus on building wealth and then putting the emphasis on uh, fitness because it will be automatic once you have a personal fitness coach. Uh, this is just one example. But again, the main thing to take out of it is that Basically, there's only one thing that can be truly the most important thing in your life. And it's that thing where if you get it done, everything else will be automatic, easy, or irrelevant. So he also talks about six lies of success. So the first lie is that everything matters equally. Again, this is the point of the book. It's like, dude, there's always, 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 there's one thing that matters the most. There's one thing you can do right now that matters the most. There's one goal that matters the most. There's one um, thing in, let's say, your relationship that would make the most difference. There's one thing you can do right now to improve your finances. There's one thing you can do every day to stay fit regardless of your situation. So it's always one thing. There's only one thing that's like the most important one. Uh, second, uh, misconception about success is that multitasking works. He basically says that there's tons of scientific evidence that multitasking does not work at all. Um, so you want to focus on one thing at a time. Third one is a disciplined life, is that you don't need to be disciplined. Uh, it's an illusion. Uh, people are not that much more disciplined than other people. I mean, you, you can obviously develop willpower and discipline, but it's it's unnecessary. You need to find the one thing, like what's the most important thing I have to do, and you wanna make that a habit. So once you make it a habit, after 66 days, um, it becomes a habit, and then you don't need discipline to make it happen. So he says people who look disciplined are usually simply people with really, really good habits. So they, they used willpower and discipline to make it habitable, but once it's a habit, it's it doesn't require effort. Um, fourth misconception, willpower is always on whale call. Um, basically, he says that willpower is limited and it's renewable. So every morning you wake up with a limited amount of willpower. You can improve it by eating good foods and training it, but once you run out of it, you know, let's say you made tough decisions, you are under stress, um, anytime you do something that is out of character, out of habit, you know, something that's not default, um, you lose willpower. And once you run out of willpower during the day, you resort to default decisions. So you better hope you have good habits because somebody with good default decisions, like for example, I am vegan and I only eat healthy for many years now. So my default is eating healthy. You know, when I run out of willpower, I don't go to get snacks. Um, I don't even need to take them out of a house to not be, um, you know, uh, to to not have the uh, temptation. Uh, I, I really just don't care for them. Um, so again, once you run out of willpower, you're going to go back to your default. So so first of all, you better make sure you have good habits. Um, he says you can only build one habit at a time, uh, which means you can build about six, seven habits a year only. Um, he makes says make sure you don't sabotage your success 
after you used up your willpower. Now, I know I had this problem myself for a while, uh, where let's say I had a really, really good day. You know, this was during my destructive phases in life. Let's say I had a really good productive day and I would run out of willpower around 8 p.m. What I would do is uh, resort to default, which would be, let's say, watching stupid YouTube videos. And then I would stay up until like 4 a.m. And then the next day would be fucked up. So make sure you don't destroy or sabotage your success during the day when you run out of willpower. Again, you ask yourself, what's the one thing I can do to make sure I don't sabotage my success tomorrow uh, once I run out of willpower? So for example, in my case, it would be delete YouTube, dude, or just go straight to bed. Uh, so don't fight your willpower, base your life around it. Um, he also says there's no such thing as a balanced life. Um, basically, life is about doing the one thing um, in your most important aspect, so your, your purpose. Uh, so if your purpose is to help kids uh, around the world, um, you know, help starving kids, that's your, it's going to be imbalanced. You're going to put most of your time on that. But you need to make sure you also um, do the one thing that would matter in other areas of your life. It's called counterbalancing, balancing. Meaning in fitness, what's the one thing I can do that would fit my schedule to keep fit? Oh, just, you know, work out 15 minutes a day. What can, I make, what can I do every day to make sure my relationship stays very well off? Oh, um, call your partner every single day and tell him, tell him or her that you love her. Um, now, the sixth mis misconception is that big is bad. Basically, it says that um, your success is based on the actions you take. And the actions you take are based on your thinking. So the bigger your thinking, the bigger your actions, the bigger your actions the bigger the success. Um, really cool quote. Uh, we are kept from our goal, not by obstacles, but by a clear path to a lesser goal. So he says that the, basically the temptation to go after something that's familiar um, and doable is what destroys um, our motivation to go after bigger goals. So make the goal big, make it massive, and make sure you have enough willpower, enough you know, I wouldn't say willpower, but enough horsepower, enough want uh, to actually go after the bigger goal where it's, you don't really know how you're going to make it happen, um, but it's just so much worth it, more worth it, worth it, um, more lies. Um, success is not supposed to be frustrating. Uh, suffering is not mandatory. Uh, you don't need to act successful if you don't feel like it. You just need to take the actions that would make you successful. And you don't need to pump and motivate yourself every day. Uh, you know, like, oh my God, yeah, let's be motivated. My goals, yeah, just, you know, until you burn out. You know, you can do it kind of uh, in a chill way. Again, just make sure you do the one thing every day. Okay, so um, uh, motivation is not like uh, a requirement. It's a bonus. Um, now, truths of success. He says there's no benefit uh, in grinding long hours, you know, working 12 hours a day, um, you know, the whole uh, grinded, you know, hustle mentality. It's good in the sense that you are taking action, but just working more doesn't mean you get more success. Sometimes it would mean the contrary because you might burn yourself out um, or focus on the little details. Um, he says success is simply about taking the right actions at the right time. So just making a really good decisions um, every day, every week, every year would build upon itself and would lead to really, really successful life. And he obviously says when you focus on the one thing, your life becomes a lot simpler, easier, and sometimes even t a lot more productive for a lot less effort. It's basically the Pareto principle. It's 80% uh, of your results come from 20% of your, of your effort or some var variation of it. Um, and then he teaches you about the focusing question. This is a part that I really, really like. He says that this, basically Andrew Carnegie, uh, Warren Buffett, and Bill Gates all agree that the secret to success is focus. He says uh, they all agree to basically put your, all your eggs in one basket and just w watch it very, very closely. Meaning uh, choose one path, do it 
as well as, po as physically possible. Ask yourself every day, what do I need to do to be the best at it? Um, and again, just stick to one thing until you see it all the way through. So it basically says that you can navigate through life with questions. Um, whatever you ask of life, you're going to get. Uh, whenever you ask your brain a question, you're going to have to have an answer. And he says you can basically do it, um, you can ask big questions or you can ask small questions, meaning how do I make a million dollars next year or how to make an additional $10,000 next year. Now you can be specific or you can be uh, general. So uh, you can ask how do I double my sales um, in six months um, or you can ask how do I make more money, for example. Um, the more specific you get, the better quality answer you're going to get. And the bigger question you ask, the, the more um, it's going to be uh, beneficial to your life. Because asking a big question or asking a little question or taking big action or small action, you know, both goals require equal effort. It takes the same effort to be worth uh, 100 million as it takes to be worth $10,000. Um, so you, you might as well ask the big questions and ask them specifically. So make sure you ask, how do I make, for example, not $10,000, how do I make $1 million or $10 million or $100 million? And then when you ask that, you want to be specific. So how do I make $100 million in the next 30 years? And then you want to break that down. Like, what can I do today to get me on the path to make $100 million um, in 30 years? Or how can I make a hundred million dollars today? Which is a very interesting question. Um, so he breaks down the question. He says the, the first part of the question is what's the one thing? Uh, this basically directs your brain to only focus on one thing. Uh, he says that I can do, meaning not something you want to do, you hope to do, you should do, you could do, you would do. What can I do as in right now? Um, such that by doing it, meaning you have a specific, a specific purpose for doing it, what is the one thing I can do that when I do it, you know, after I do it, so you're looking for a result, then, and then the result, everything, and, and the, the, the most, the default question for the one thing would be that everything else would become easier or unnecessary or whatever question you need. So um, let's say you're looking for a life goal uh, you know, like what's the most important thing to focus on in my life? You can ask yourself, what's the one thing that if I focus on, I'm going to achieve all my goals? Or what's the one thing that if I focus on, uh, what's, what's the one thing I can focus on that would make all my other goals easier or unnecessary to achieve? Um, now he says there's three types of answers to every question. He says there's a doable answer, there's a challenging answer, and there's an extraordinary answer. So the, the, the doable one is like, you know, like let's say how do I make an extra um, $10,000 a year? Um, so the answer is simple. The answer is, um, okay, just make an additional, uh, eight, you know, $800 a month, um, an addition, which means an additional um forty dollars a day simple um, a more challenging one would be let's say how do I make an extra hundred thousand um, dollars by next year now now you're aiming to for higher um, goals so the question would be more out of your comfort zone it would actually require you to stretch yourself to get it <clears throat> now the the third one which is the best one is extraordinary answer so that's asking questions like what can I do to get 100,000 subscribers by next week? What can I do uh, right now that would help me make $100 million by next year? Now, these answers, what they do, they basically def defy your sense of what's possible. These questions are uh, the same questions that people who define industries ask. Uh, you know, people like the Wright brothers who invented airplanes. Or uh, people like um, Steve Jobs, who helped invent the first touch phone. Um, you know, or the, the people at NASA who got to the moon. You know, it's questions that defy what we see as 
um, possible or or you know uh, even make anything that makes sense um, you can ask yourself what's the one thing I can do today that would propel my life forward more than anything I've done this year and you you'll get you're gonna get an answer you're gonna have to get an answer because your brain will always give you an answer now what he does he also breaks down um, the keys to extraordinary results he says it's basically built it's like a pyramid and it's based on three things so you have purpose priorities and productivity uh, purpose is where you're going and why is it important so uh, for example my purpose is I want to be worth over 500 million dollars uh, let's say by the age 40 because of all the benefits that it's gonna cause you know it's gonna help let me take care of my family forever uh, it's an almost indestructible amount of wealth um, I'll be able to help change the world I'll be able to make all my dreams come true regarding fitness, travel, relationships. Um, so that's the purpose. That's like the fuel. And the bigger and more important the purpose is, the more staying power and momentum you're going to have. So, you know, you're going to encounter setbacks. And the bigger that your purpose, the more oomph you're going to get, you know, firepower, the more staying power, the more momentum you're going to get. Now, then there's priority. So... Priority means you, you know how to recognize on a day-to-day -day basis, on a weekly basis, on a yearly basis, what's the one thing right now? What's the most leveraged activities I can make? So uh, in my business, since I do coaching, what I do is cold call clients. Um, now for me, you know, there's many things I do. I have multiple websites, social media accounts. Uh, there's many people hitting me up you know, calling me, uh, you know, do this, do that, coach me, help me. But what I, what this book helped me do was recognize basically in terms of priorities, me cold calling new clients, um, closing contracts and ever growing uh, prices is the one thing. Um, that's the thing that you have to put most of your attention on um, in order to actually get productive results, not just be busy but actually get the most results for your time now the third component is productivity so that's the degree to which you take right actions so again the base of it is your productivity somebody who does nothing um, obviously is going to have zero productivity the more you do the more uh, is going to happen now that's multiplied by your priorities so how clear are you on your um, on your goals and what you need to do to actually achieve them <clears throat> you know what's the one thing to achieve them at, at all times and then there's the purpose which is basically the um, the most important part that's you know he says that um, it again it's built on top of one another so when you see somebody who's very productive it means that he knows his priorities he mean he knows what's important to do and when you see somebody with good priorities it means he's very clear on his pro on his purpose he knows why he's doing it and what he wants to get to um, now the next one is uh, setting goals to now so basically he says you have to make the connection between what you do now and your long-term goals so you have to break down let's say you have a goal for 30 years ahead I want to be worth 500 million in 30 years um, so I, I gave an example so I want to be worth over 500 million by the age of 40. So to make sure I'm on track with that goal, I'll need to have about 300 million by 35. To make sure I'm on track with that goal, I'll need to make sure I'm worth about 50 million by 30. To make sure I'm on track with that goal, I'll need to uh, make sure I'm worth 10 million by 25. To make sure I'm on track with that goal, I need to make about $1 million by age 23. To make sure I'm top of track, on track of that goal, I need to make about $200,000 a month. To make sure I'm on top, of, on top of that goal, I need to make sure I make at least $50,000 a week. To make sure I'm on top of that goal, I need to make about $10,000 a day, $10,000 a day. To make sure I'm on top of that goal, um, I'll need to make about 100 calls every day and uh, close contracts uh, in uh, prices of 5000 and above. Uh, and to make sure I'm on track 
with that goal, I basically need to make calls right now. So at every moment, you know where you are on the spectrum, you know where you are, how you have the connection between the long-term goal and what you need to do now. And you can always know, okay, am I sticking to the plan? Is what I'm doing now the most important thing? You know, the, the thing that would build the blocks, the domino effect, basically, that would lead to um, my goals being accomplished. Um, regarding time management, he says you need to block three things into your time, into your schedule, your time off, your one thing, and then everything else. So obviously when you focus on the one thing, your life is going to be a bit chaotic because um, you put less emphasis on things that come and go and you willingly decide not to do everything. So um, the reason you need time off is because you just need time off. It's, it's uh, any person, no matter how much of a workaholic he is, uh, might succeed in spite of being a workaholic, not because of being a workaholic. Uh, you need some time off. You need time to sleep. You need a bit of time to rest. Even Elon Musk rests a bit. Um, so you need to block that time. You need to be very, very vigilant that you know you have very specific time, where times where you know this is my rest time. This is where I'm winding down, uh, or else you're just gonna burn yourself. Um, the time you block for your one thing, basically that's the most productive time of the day. And then you need to block some time for everything else. So what that means is, um, let's say we can divide it into two categories. You can do, let's say it's uh, your one thing is in business. So you block at least four hours every day to uh, your one thing. And then you block, you block um, two hours every day for everything else. So it means, you know, people hitting you up, contacting you, emails, whatever it is, everything that it's not directly leveraged actions that would move you in the biggest steps. Because again, you want to make sure your life, you need to, to do some maintenance. You can't just, um, you know, say, fuck it, just make sales all day and then not actually take care of your clients or not actually um, uh, think of new ways to uh, help people or actually answer emails. You know, you need that part. Uh, so you need at least a bit of it. Um, and regarding areas that are outside that, like let's say again, the one thing is in business, you need to ask yourself, what's the one thing I need to do to maintain my fitness? What's the one thing I can do to maintain my relationships and actually keep them maintained? Um, because if you don't, you might lose them forever. Um, so um, you need to protect your time. You need to treat it, you know, the time you set, the time you blocked, you need to treat it as if it's impossible to move. Um, and there's four ways to protect your time. Um, make sure there's no distractions. Uh, make sure ahead of time you have everything you need. Like let's say you need food, water, whatever it is. Um, I even know uh, the guy from the, the movie um, The Pursuit of Happiness. He, he, this guy was homeless and he became the top uh, uh, stockbroker at a company in like a year or two. What he would do, he would... Um, actually avoid drinking water he would actually drink as little water as possible based on his um, uh, physiology where he didn't even need to take a bathroom break so that would give him an extra 10 minutes including the time uh, that it takes you to kind of you know get back in focus after you go back from the bathroom um, he also says be extremely vigilant um, you know you might go to even a bathroom break and meet a person on the way or open your phone and then without even noticing lose two hours of your time because everybody wants your time. Um, so he says, you know, you can basically sum it up and ask, what's the one thing I can do that will protect my time uh, that if I do it, it will make everything else regarding my time protection either easy or irrelevant. So, you know, a funny thing that comes to mind is like just, you know, uh, you want to be in your office alone, um, you know, get everything set up, turn off your phone, whatever, like an answer is always going to come up. Um, he says you need to be committed. Uh, there's three commitments you need to make. One is you need to follow a path of mastery. This means that um, you basically want to um, 
keep doing the the one thing and keep improving uh, for basically commit to improving your craft forever um, the second thing is to uh, go from being an entrepreneurial per personality to a more purposeful personality so an an entrepreneurial personality it's more about um, I just want to get it done like uh, how do I make it uh, so it happens as fast as possible just focus on good enough so for example doing emails if it's not your one thing you kind of want to go about as fast as possible you know type as fast as possible just get it done get it done get it done on the other hand some that's your that is your one thing like uh, like selling like uh, servicing your clients whatever it is for you you want to be purposeful about it you want to basically make a commitment to continually improve and never settle on good enough because people who settle on good enough what happens is they get bored from what they do they lose the passion and then they plateau and um, they kind of say okay I'm kind of done with that they go do something else because they think okay I'm done with that Avenue they do something else and then they kind of restart and then they also get to the same limit okay that's good enough also and then you're in a never-ending cycle where you're always you never reach beyond a certain mastery level now the third one that he says that's the most important commitment you can make is being accountable being accountable means um, whenever something you know you want to be results oriented so if something is not working you need to take responsibility for it so it basically says you're either accountable or you're not so somebody who's accountable something happens to him he acknowledges it he's okay um, he actually seeks to see the results he, he wants to know whether his actions brought results or not and then he acknowledges the results okay I called a hundred people I didn't make any money he takes responsibility for it yeah it's my fault he finds solutions how do I actually make sure that I make money from these calls and he makes it happen no excuses the person who doesn't take responsibility uh, basically things happen to him he avoids reality he doesn't want to see the results he's like okay just I, I put in effort and that's good enough um, he fights reality so let's say you call a lot of people you don't even make sales he, he, that person doesn't even um, you know let's say things start to go bad now you know you're not making money because you're not making sales he actually fights it it's like no it's the clients it's it's you know he blames people it, it's, it's not my fault it's not supposed to happen and then he makes excuses and then he just waits and hopes it gets better and it usually doesn't um, so you can always choose you can always make the choice being accountable at any time you can also make the choice to let go of accountability but the more you choose to be accountable or unaccountable the easier it will be because it will become um, much easier and his best advice he says is get a coach get somebody who keeps you accountable he says there's practically no highly uh, successful people that don't have a coach or a mentor that keeps track of them um, now he says there's four thieves of productivity one is the inability to say no he says basically you want to think of um, focus and success less as uh, doing the right thing but more as saying no to anything else uh, it's it's a journey of subtraction you know you want to see how focused you can go uh, but you get focused uh, not by uh, squeezing stuff not by putting a blind eye you get focused by saying no to anything that's outside of what you agreed on uh, the the second thing that is a productivity thief is fearing chaos so it's basically you know when you focus on the one thing um, some things won't get done it's just a fact and you must learn to be comfortable with having things that are just not done because they're not that important even though they might look urgent or important um, third thing is poor health uh, if you have shit health you're gonna have a very hard time keeping up your energy and the fourth thing is you want to have good habits so you want to sleep well you want to work out you want to meditate you want to set your goals every day you want to spend time with your loved ones basically take care of your shit um, unsupportive environments he says you you must have a supportive environment uh, no one succeeds or fails alone uh, he says there's uh, almost 60 percent higher chances of you becoming obese if your best friend becomes obese uh, so keep that in mind um, basically he says that you know to summarize um, <clears throat> he says that every uh, you know how do you know like 
uh, in terms of the journey, like, okay, should I take risks? Uh, what should I go for in life? Basically, he says the best formula to uh, make sure you live a good life is to um, purposely live life to avoid regrets. So he says the five most common regrets people have before they die is they wish they just let themselves be happier. Um, they wish they stay in contact with their friends. They wish they had the courage to express their feelings. They wish they hadn't worked so hard. And the number one regret by far is that they wish they had the courage to go after their own dreams and be true to themselves. So again, you want to know what's your purpose. You want to do the one thing you need to do every day. Uh, and that's how you live a life without uh, regrets. Um, and uh, to, to summarize, he basically says you don't need to make sense of the world. You just need to know your purpose, your priorities, and bring a high productivity to your priorities. And your life will quickly start to make sense, no matter how good or bad it is right now. Um, he says, um, he gives basically a lot of examples on questions you can ask to start implementing the one thing. Um, so I'm just going to give them, and then basically that's my wrap up. Um, he says, what's the one thing I can do today to know my life's purpose? What's the one thing that I can do in 90 days to get back in shape? What's the one thing I can do to practice guitar every day for 20 minutes? What can I do to make my next family vacation the best I've ever had? What can I do to create a culture where we do the one thing every day? What can I do? Uh, what's the one thing I can do to uh, finish my work successfully in half the time? Um, and my takeaways from this book is, um, again, my one thing is cold calling, high-performing clients. Um, it's the thing that makes me the most money. It's the fastest way to get to my goals. Um, it'll, I also realized it needs to be my first task of the day uh, since it takes a lot of willpower. Um, because what happens is I waste my willpower on fitness and things like that and worrying because you know it's kind of stressful to cold call so it's actually better to do it first thing in the morning and then do the other things um, yeah that's pretty much it so I hope you enjoyed the summary um, again the full summary is in uh, you can download it from the description um, if you have any question feel free to ask me if you have any comments because this is the first time I've been uh, uh, I've done a book review uh, feel free to tell me. Um, thank you for watching all the way. I'm a bit sick and a bit tired, so obviously the presentation wasn't wasn't the best. Um, so again, thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you next time.